Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Over on Instagram a few days ago I asked you guys what you think about this video series idea that I had. Due to a bit of lack of time I was thinking okay what video concept would be great for a week where I don't have necessarily all the time that I usually have for my projects which includes you know finding an idea, designing, pattern making, fitting, fabric sourcing, sewing, filming, editing, shooting the piece, getting the pattern up on my Etsy store, doing the sewing instructions. When I talk about that, that sounds insane to put everything in one week's time. But anyways, that's my daily business. So I don't have that much time this week because I'm actually going on vacation. I'm going to France. So while you're watching this, I'm already back home again. So I was thinking about a video concept that would be interesting for you guys to watch. You also get some knowledge input and it would be something that I can fit in the time that I had. So I asked you guys which pattern you'd like to see me make in a weird fabric or like a fabric that the pattern is not intended for and there were a whole bunch of you guys who said do this or that out of organza. Velvet was also a high contestant so that's in the back of my mind. I will do that in the future because velvet is a topic in of itself so we're gonna tackle that in the future so hit subscribe to not miss out on that. And for this week we're going to tackle the winter dress marisol but we're not gonna make it out of a thicker wool which this is made out of but we're gonna make it in the sheerest most thinnest fabric possible we're gonna make it out of silk organza and because that's what I like to do. I also added an embroidery for the upper section up here. This dress has like this triangle section on the upper body so I thought it would be really nice to add embroidery to this upper section. So this is what I did right here. You can also see how sheer this material is. It's like nothing. It's air. <laughs> so I added this embroidery here. I'm gonna show you in the drop down as well in a second. But this is that. I prepared that yesterday and actually what I did was use a backing that is soaking off in hot water. That's why I was able to embroider on this organza usually that's not gonna happen because the fabric is so like nothing so lightweight that it's just gonna rip underneath the machine if it's even gonna sew it you know or like embroider it you can obviously sew it normally but embroidery there is a lot of tension on it so the fabric would just like go inside or like rip and whatnot so I used a water soluble backing for this which is why we have two beautiful mirrored embroideries for the front section now. I already cut out all of my pattern pieces and I'm ready to sew. I wanted to talk about a few things that I will try to do for this pattern like some even more challenges than the fabric itself already has in stock for us. So usually for the necklines or like something that lays on the bias like this diagonal cut right here you would use some sort of interfacing so something like this or there's also the option to get like a stronger fixation with this thread in the middle. I don't know if you can see it but there's basically one seam right through the middle so this just does not stretch at all but lays on the bias itself so it's perfect for curves. These are like two options that you could use as interfacing tape. I would usually put onto this diagonal seam, the neckline, probably also the armhole and whatnot and then also you have a button tape right here which you also would usually you know have interfacing on so that it has more strength. Now because this is very see-through as you can see here that is not something that we can do for this dress. So you have to do this without any interfacing whatsoever. So that is a challenge that you have to face because the fabric itself is already like wobbly as hell. Plus no interfacing, it's gonna be very difficult to sew this. Then on top of that, I already mentioned that everything is sheer. Everything on the inside will be visible on the outside. Also the seams and the raw edge or overlocked edge or whatnot, the finishing of the seam on the inside will 
will be visible on the outside. So you have to think before you cut your pattern pieces out, how do you want to finish your seams? Now the ideal solution for this type of dress would be French seams. French seams is basically an encasing of the seam by the pattern itself. So you have a tiny bit more seam allowance. Usually I do one centimeter for normal seams. For French seams I do 1.5 centimeter seams. This is not always possible if you have very curvy seams for example it's very difficult. So the other option that I see to avoid like visible raw edges or overlocked edges is bias tape. Bias tape you can either do yourself or you can buy pre ironed bias tape like this one. This is like a satin bias tape. But there are also some smart helpers like these things here which are bias tape makers. So that's something that I probably will also try out and then I'll figure out which one I'd like to do. Also another thing, I don't know if you if you can see that. Can you see that? How the, the color shows through uh, better? These are without fabric behind them. Like these are cut out by the machine by the way. <laughs> Like you use specific needles that are basically knives and then you let the machine like sew that specific uh, object and you can just take out the fabric basically which is like mind-blowing. So I tried that out for these small flowers right here because I thought that would be a nice touch but you know that's besides the point. It's just something that I was really excited about so I wanted to show you. <laughs> so another thing that I think I will change for this specific fabric is the button tape in the front. Other than that, I will also not do any pockets because it's impossible. <laughs> it's not, obviously it's not impossible, but you will see the pocket. It's a how do you say that in English? In German we would say Sollbruchstelle. So it's like a breaking point meant to happen because you cut into the fabric and sew it back up. It's like unnecessary. I know we all love pockets in our dresses but for this dress this will be a point where the fabric will rip over time. If you want to do that obviously you can. There is a pattern for it. The tutorial will also be on my original video so if you want go for it. And I think that's all that I wanted to say. Where did I put the zipper in the original dress? I must have put it in the back. Okay it's in the back. I just quickly looked it up because I remember that I cut the back on fold because it was written on it but I have a version number one of this pattern which had one error apparently and I quickly fixed it but we're good now. Let's go and start. So the first thing that I will be doing just as I did with the original dress is close the darts in the front piece, probably also directly in the back piece so that I have all the darts closed and I cut out the dart because the fabric on the inside won't lay flat anymore and now I can just put right sides together like this. I also drew on the stitching line and I'm just gonna follow along. So for the dart I decided I'm gonna try to actually do like a really nice finish here on the inside which basically means that I'm gonna fold the seam allowance to one side and fold it on top of itself so that once I iron it the raw edge will be hidden underneath itself more or less. But I think I have to like kind of do a double seam then. So if I have this here and I iron the folded seam allowance to one side, I have to stitch it down again, I think, which is, I don't know if I want that. I mean, it looks pretty nice from the outside, let's be honest. If you just have like this very, very small and narrow seam here, I don't know. I'll think, I think I'll do it. Okay, this is what it looks like and I like how it looks and this is gonna fit right on top here. So this is gonna look like this and I think that's gonna look really, really neat. But it's gonna take a long time. But anyways, let's do the same here on this side. That's done. <laughs> So we can put this on now and here I have to be super careful because it lays on the bias. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do French seams I think here. So I'm gonna put wrong sides together and then do the whole encasing thing. So here, that's an important thing. A lot of people tend to like put when you do like French seams tend to do the uh, five millimeter stitching line thingy here. And then once you flip everything 
right sides out it's gonna be mismatched you have to do the seam allowance that you put on here so in my case you have to do 1.5 centimeter seam allowance here the stitching line the final stitching line has to align with both pattern pieces but you still stitch at five millimeters then you cut it away you flip it and then you're gonna see that they match up that's an important thing with your uh, french seams always puts the the stitching lines together He cried so much that I had to let him in. Can you hear him purr? You probably can hear him purr. He purrs like right next to the microphone. Hmm? She's also here. Everybody's visiting. <laughs> I don't know why. And you have it matching up here. Let's cut down the seam allowance and you have it matching up here. That's the front. I'm gonna quickly do the other one off camera and then we can put the button tape already on it. If I put my pattern piece here now, this right here is the center front and the center front has embroidery on. Let's quickly check where to put the line for the end of the button tape. And it's going right over the embroidery here, which means that those will overlap in the end, which is obviously not something that I want. What I could do would be just putting right sides together and not doing the button tape at all and stitching at the center front seam. That's a bummer because I planned on using like either these buttons right here, which probably look, would have looked really, really nice on this piece. Because, I mean, I don't know if you were able to understand that, but these pieces are gonna overlap like this in the end. And I should have thought about that before cutting out the embroidery piece. So I could just like do a one centimeter center front seam here, which is not the right center front because the center front is like at 1.5 centimeters inwards here. But then you're gonna have these embroideries like be right next to each other like this, which I don't think looks nice. Obviously re-embroidering is not an option because it took me the whole day yesterday. Yeah, I think there's nothing else that I can do other than just sewing at one centimeter and then, you know, handling the collar area accordingly. If I even want to do a collar, do I want to do a collar? I could just do like a facing or like this. So what I will be doing instead is just closing the center front at one centimeter. This means that there is like one centimeter width in the overall front piece, like five millimeters on each side that I have to account for, like that I have to think about, especially in the collar area. Now, because I had the issue with the center back being written as on fold, I had to like cut the center back without any seam allowance, which now with five millimeter on both sides too much is actually pretty nice because now I have seam allowance in the back. So without any issues, I can just simply go ahead and close the center front at one centimeter, therefore have one centimeter seam allowance um, in total on the back piece. So that's something really, really nice. And I can use the normal collar pieces because the width is the same. I don't know yet how I'm going to attach the collar piece because it's made to overlap. Probably I have to like cut down something or like see how it everything like fits on it because they have to meet at the central line in the, in the front but we're gonna see about that once it's time. So let's put this together at one centimeter. Obviously also doing a French seam here in the center front as it's very, very visible. So check this out. This is obviously mismatched here. If you iron it to this side, it looks better than if you iron it to this side. Can you see that? This looks super mismatched as it is. But if you do this, it's not as pronounced anymore. So that is where we're going to iron it towards. That's really satisfying how these are very parallel. Honestly, did not think that would be that perfect. I mean, down here, the flowers are not perfectly aligned, but you know, it's fine. By the way, if you're interested in seeing the full tutorial, like an actual tutorial, not just me talking about my issues with this fabric, <laughs> click up here. I have the original dress in the wool. I did a tutorial on which is a step-by-step -step guide if you actually want to make this exact pattern. 
maybe in a similar fabric or even in a cotton it doesn't really matter but like not this you know <laughs> this is for me this is a challenge so i have my back pieces now i'm just gonna put the shoulders together with a french seam as well and then tackle the sleeves now while working on this here i specifically remember my bachelor's collection which it's ridiculous but i thought it was such a great idea to use like a lot of silk organza silk chiffon like horrible fabrics to work with you know like they look amazing and they feel amazing and their quality and whatnot but they're like awful to work with because they're so like nothing you know they're they're not heavyweight you don't really have anything in your hands to me at least i, I bet there are people out there who say like no nah, that's the best fabric to work with ever and i had this one blue dress that was like fully silk and like a silk satin and then a, a silk chiffon uh, i don't know if i have it somewhere like it's in storage obviously but i have photos of it let me just quickly check that so this right here is my bachelor's collection and you know that's it <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff this is the dress that i was talking about this is the dress these sleeves is what i meant do i have a picture where you can literally see the sleeves here like the whole concept was it was about uh destroying the pieces as well don't like that's whatever these double layered silk sleeves had a inner layer of silk satin and an outer layer of this like most lightweight silk chiffon that you have ever seen and i thought it was the greatest idea to do this double sleeve with like these two silks but i had like these bows on the inside and then on top of that this like chiffon and it was like just such a mind twisting <laughs> anyways Okay, I have my neckline now completed. There is going to be a zipper put into the center back. That's why it's still open. So let's figure out the collar situation. I cut out, as the pattern suggests, two collars of each pattern piece. Eh, mistakes were made as well here. So I cut these on fold, which was not written on the pattern piece. It just said center back. But apparently I was not thinking too much while cutting out these pattern pieces so let's check if i cut these apart will these still fit this has to meet at the center front stitching line so right here if i put this on here where does it end it could fit let's prepare the collar first and then sew it onto the piece let's iron this also check how it's supposed to lay because as you can see this is like wobbly as hell so this does not need to lay like this but I'm going to iron it so that it lays exactly how the pattern piece is supposed to be and I think I'm gonna do a loop in the back with a button so I can at least use the button so that means that we have to finish also the center back but we have to sew some loops into there let's do that with a super super teeny tiny spaghetti strap what will be good probably like five centimeters and i'm gonna cut down two so i'm going to iron the seam allowance up into the piece oh boy <laughs> this is wonky that's due to how like this is not on the straight grain it's like all over the place that's why it's ironing so weirdly so maybe if i take like another piece with the salvage i can recut this on a straighter grain yeah i think i'm gonna recut both of these Okay, I accounted for the missing overlap on, in the front as well. So let's see if this irons better. I mean, it does iron a bit better. Not good, but like better than before. I don't know anymore. So <laughs> let's just continue and see how this looks. I picked the one that sits on the right and I'm gonna add two little loops to the back and I make sure that the seam allowance 
does not have any loops placed there as it is going to get you know folded down like this so these are gonna sit right on the top edge and now we can put right sides together and so all the way down from the fold line here that we prepared over here to the other fold line Okay, let's cut the seam allowance down to an even size. All of this will be visible. So I'm gonna do like about five millimeters. I'm gonna cut down the corner a little bit as well. And now let's turn this right sides out and see what we can work with. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. The corner also turned really nicely. Let's quickly iron this so we can see the actual results. I'm gonna clean this edge up here on the inside so that at least this is not gonna look messy. It will look messy, who am I kidding? Honestly, between the two of these, the first one looked better. <laughs> like this is not even close to laying flat. I mean, they're not supposed to lay flat as one side is clearly bigger, but like somewhat flat? I don't know. Let's put these on. Okay, I'm confident that this is gonna turn out great. So I have like two spots that need to match up, which is the center front and the stitching line in the center back and the rest in between, I'm just gonna, you know, make do. And since the uh, seams are like a bit mismatched now, the uh, notch here is not gonna match up with the actual shoulder seam, which is fine. It's just something that I, you know, need to know while doing this. And this should also match up now as it does. That's a relief. Okay, first side and then the second side. Okay, let's put this on. Let's cut the neckline seam allowance down and then we can flip it and sew the collar on. So it's super important with sheer fabric that you cut down all of the seam allowances to an even length as it all will be visible. In the center front I cut towards the seam allowance because um, both collars have to encase one side of the front piece. And now if I fold it over like this I should be able to cover up the stitching line here. And now I'm just gonna try to cover up the seam evenly so that I can top stitch this in place. I think that worked better than I thought. And it also doesn't look too messy. It kind of like laid itself down however it's it was supposed to. I mean obviously I helped it a bit but like it it's not too messy at all. This point here in the front I can like kind of hide with like a button. These are like pink ones. Yeah that's what I'm gonna do. Definitely that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> if I had smaller ones in this color I would definitely put these in, like in the middle of the of the flowers but i'm gonna definitely use these for up here and then also for the closure in the back but that worked better than i thought i'm really pleasantly surprised so basically we did the bodice part and now we are going to tackle the sleeves i don't think that there's anything specific to this fabric for the sleeves i think i'm just gonna do the sleeves however i'm doing them for any other project so basically closing the dart gathering and finishing the side seams at the very end but yeah let's quickly do that it shouldn't be taking too long but i think i'll do something special <laughs> for the cuffs i already mentioned that i think i'm gonna do the cuffs towards the outside oh and also i think i'm going to finish the arm's eye on top with the satin bias tape because otherwise I don't really know how to do that nicely as it's like a very curved seam and French seams probably will not look that great so that's what I will be doing there. Let's quickly put the dart into our piece. 
So I ironed the uh, dart towards the back and now I'm going to put the sleeve facing towards the right side already. So that means I'm going to encase the seam allowance and fold it towards the right side. So I put wrong sides together here, close the sleeve hem here and then uh, cut down the seam allowance and then we can already iron the facing towards the front. Let's cut this down and then we're gonna iron it towards the front. So what I'm doing here, just to emphasize, is um, some design changes uh, that I do because I want to. This is basically the opposite way of what is written in the sewing instructions. So that's just a creative liberty that I'm taking here. But anyways, so that's prepared. We can gather the sleeve cap now. I'm gonna gather the same as I did for the wool dress. So from sleeve point to sleeve point with two rows of stitching. Okay, I'm gonna sew this and then I'm gonna take out the gathering stitches and add the satin bias tape to like hide the seam. Okay, that worked like a dream, honestly. It looks super clean on both sides. I am so happy about that. I'm even thinking about taking out the actual stitch here. Should I do that? I mean, I cut down the seam allowance. Probably I shouldn't do that. Otherwise I'll risk the sleeve just ripping out. And this is what it looks like. Oh, it looks super nice. Okay, that's exciting. I really like that. Okay, honestly, that's something I needed. I desperately needed in this project because this was making me crazy. <laughs> okay, that looks really nice. Let's quickly put the other sleeve on. Okay, now the sleeves are in place and I think I'm actually just gonna do um, French seams for the side seams. And now I'm gonna try to pin this in place. And this here, I really don't like. And I'm not sure how I can make this look nicer. I think this would look rather nice. I don't think that it needs to be, oh well, this also looks really nice. Okay, I'm gonna add the satin band. And then I can use the satin band to kind of even out this mess here. One thing that I wanted to show you is this finishing here. So I did a satin band around the raw edge of my sleeve and I did an infinity satin finish here. It's not the neatest right here, but basically you can see this diagonal line, uh, which I used to, you know, make this look seamless. For everybody who follows me on Instagram, which by the way you should, you already know this hack because I did this like a few weeks ago. I don't know when I did it, but I didn't have a project to it. I just had the hack that I wanted to show you. But this actually is a project where you can use this hack, which is super nice. Okay, I just tried on the blouse and well, it doesn't fit. And let me explain you why and how to fix that. So my blouse is made out of a very, very delicate fabric. Therefore, it has no strength. You cannot like pull on the piece so that it fits other than, for example, the wool that I was using for the original. You could, you know, like tuck yourself in, close the zipper, no issue whatsoever. It worked more or less in this area down here as a corset, especially with the darts that I sewed on. But obviously, it is a very different situation with this fabric right here. You cannot pull on the piece to make it fit, even though like I technically could 
but there are also other things with this fabric. So if I were to pull this tight, this is what's going to happen with the darts and with the embroidery. So it's going to have this weird wobbly thing here going on. It just does not want to sit flat. It, you cannot make it sit flat with this being pulled tight here in the back. And I marked until where it is too tight so that I know how to fix this. And the solution to this is basically a triangle. So it fits up here, it fits all the way until the needle. And then down here to make it also comfortable, especially to not think that it's, I'm going to rip it the whole time because of the delicacy of the fabric, I'm going to add 10 centimeters of width to the waist. So that means that I'm going to have everything sewn together, or like not sewn together, I'm gonna to add a zipper, but like I'm gonna have everything like fit together up until the needle. And then down here, I'm gonna add a triangle with a width down here at the waist of 10 centimeters. And I'm gonna put that in place and have a, a new center back basically, which we're going to add a zipper to. And I was thinking about how to do that as well as I don't have a zipper that I can part other than metal zippers. So I could do a lace up, but no, I'm never gonna wear it because it's just such a hassle to get in and out of it. It would look probably really, really nice. I could do a button up, which would look amazing. I don't have enough buttons of the ones that I want to use though. And also I don't think it would be too comfortable if you you know, lean against something. And also you would also need somebody to help you in and out of. So these are very elegant, very high effort methods to close the back. What I will do instead is just do a zipper because I'm lazy and I also want to get in and out of this without another person helping me. So I have two options here. I could use an inseam zipper. That would mean though that I would have to, you know, leave this open until a specific spot so that I can put my head through and then I can put it over my, my head basically. So I would have to sew the zipper in this way opening towards the uh, neck so that I have enough space down here and somewhere here is going to be that point where the hole stops and you can get inside the neck and close it that way. Or you could do a partable zipper. I only have like these big ugly metal zippers right here that you could technically hide through like some techniques. Let's be honest, this does not fit onto here. So what I will be doing, of course, is this with like a peak hole up here. My cat is crying as hell because he wants to get inside, but I'm not letting him in. So I'm gonna, I do like a peak hole up here and sew in the zipper down here and hope that it all works out. I think this should be enough for my head. So I'm just gonna put a needle in here to see until where I need to finish the seam here. But let's actually start and do the triangle that I want to add to the bottom here. So we're aiming for something that's gonna look like this. This is where I already put the triangle in. This is what it looks like before sewing it in. And we're basically just gonna do a French seam in the center back. I already marked until where I have to put the triangle in. That's just the needle that I had uh, in my piece before. And now I'm just gonna put wrong sides together, do a French seam and have like this piece on the other side as well. And that is the outcome. So it looks almost like it's supposed to be like this. And we can now continue by putting the zipper in. Now this is a bit too long, it's 60 centimeters, it's just what I had here. Obviously we don't need that long of a zipper. I'm just gonna sew the zipper in until the needle here, probably a tiny bit below that. So I'm going to do the zipper normally, as I always do. Let me just add a zipper notch to this piece. I'm gonna go like 1.5 
centimeters below that as my zipper notch. And then I can just put this in as per usual using my zipper foot here. And when it comes to this part right here where the gap is, I'm going to try to align the zipper band with the new seam allowance of the triangle and just ignore the one of the original fabric uh, because it's just gonna prevent a hole. And I think I'm gonna finish the inside with a satin band. Then everything is just gonna look super neat and tidy. And now I'm just gonna sew from the zipper knot here. We can just sew up until the very end and then we're gonna finish it with a bias tape. Okay, so I did like this kind of curve up here, which is also the finish of this, uh, the zipper. Down here, we're gonna cut it as well once we finish the hem. And now we can do this up here. And I'm just gonna do like a super easy finish, which is a double fold, and then we're gonna top stitch. Let's do a satin band. And then we can also like go over here with a satin band and make it look really pretty. So basically for that, we need to leave space five millimeters until where the zipper starts, which we're going to ease in to zero centimeters. So basically right where the collar ends. So like this, and now we can add a satin band all around here, which we're gonna end up here with a nice neat fold. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> I somehow ended up with this and it looks really good. And I'm not sure, <laughs> like I did not film this because I was, it was just stressing me out too much. So basically what I did here were like my dirt corners. Not really, like I just, did a top stitch here underneath to like have these really nice diagonal edges. Like it's not perfect, you know, that there's like some issues here and whatnot, but I think from afar especially, this looks super, super nice. Like this looks bomb. And then I'm just gonna add like buttons up here and then that's the back and with the zipper. So you can open it up go inside here, which works. <laughs> and then we can finish the hem. And then the whole thing is done. It's about time. <laughs> so let's do a bias tape at the hem and then we're done. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that I will be able to wear this. I just have to sew in the buttons. I hope you're not too sad that it's not an actual dress and just the top. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ring the bell so you will get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, if you haven't already, go check out my Instagram where you're gonna find a whole bunch of hacks. I used two of my Instagram hacks here on this project, so it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Give me a follow there and help me reach my goal of 200,000 followers. That would be amazing. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you can also find the pattern of the actual dress. So this with the skirt for the like thicker fabric that I made the original out of. And you can find so many more other patterns if you don't like this one specifically. So go over there and check that out. A special thanks to all of my channel members. You can get exclusive benefits through the join button or the link in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys!